we want to do first is configure this local server. Okay, we want to set up this server, whereas the server manager is actually designed for not just working with the local server, but with remote servers as well. Okay, so that's something, again, we're going to have to get used to here with Windows Server 2012, is whether we're local or remote, it's the same utility. Now, I will tell you that if I click this link that says configure this local server, it's the same thing as if I click local server over here in the left pane. Okay, so it's, it's the same thing. And as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click configure this local server so that you can see what happens. You'll see this bar is going to go down when I click over here. So I'll click. And boom, just like we expected to see, it jumped down here to the local server. Now it's taking just a moment here while it loads up the information from the local server. And then what we see here is actually very similar to what we saw, especially in, in, in this top section here, in the properties section. This is very similar, and I can scroll this over, we can look at some of the stuff that's over here, to what we saw in the initial configuration tool previously. But with the old version, with the ICT, what would happen is you would go through and eventually you would check a box saying, don't show this to me anymore. And then it never failed. People would always ask me, how do I get that back? Now that I check the box saying, don't show me, I actually kind of like that tool and I want it back. Well, now they've just merged it into one tool. It's in the server manager and you can get to it anytime you want. So let's just kind of go down through the different properties and see what we have to set up. The first thing is the computer name itself. You'll see here it assigns a random computer name. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And it takes me into the system properties where I can go ahead and change that computer name. And of course, I'm going to change it to ny-dc-1, right? That was the name that we gave to the virtual machine because I know that that's the name that I want this computer to be. Now, just because I name it New York DC1 doesn't make it a domain controller. Okay, we'll see how to make it a domain controller in another lesson. Okay, but I know that this is going to become our domain controller, and that's why I'm naming it that. Now, we're not going to make it a member of a domain, although I could do that at this point if that was something I needed to do. But this particular server is going to become the domain. Okay, it, it, so I can't join a domain. So I'm going to leave it as a work group. I'll click OK. And then it tells me I have to restart for this to happen. So I'll click OK, close, and go ahead and restart now. So it'll take just a moment while this system reboots. But when it's done rebooting, what's going to happen is, is it'll prompt me to log in. I'll log in. The server manager will open by default. And I will tell you, again, similar to what we've seen in the past, you could check a box saying don't open the server manager by default. But Again, you, you want to do everything from the server manager. So unlike previous operating systems where maybe we did not want utilities to open automatically, in this case, it's kind of nice that the server manager opens up automatically. So we're already back at the login screen. So I'll press Control Alt Delete. And I will enter in my password for the administrator account. It's going to get me to the desktop. And then the server manager will open by default. Once the server manager opens, I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump back over to the local server. And we should see that the computer name has changed. So it's going to take just a moment while it finishes loading. You can see this little bar going across the top. Actually, it already, it, there it is. Okay, you watch this bar go across the top. Once it stops, we can go ahead and configure this local server. Uh, I don't want you to worry about the fact that these flashed red for a moment. Okay, you'll notice one of them already has gone back to green, and no, I didn't click on anything. That happened automatically. The local server still has the services showing up as being red. That means that certain services have a problem. Okay? Red, red means you have a problem, and that's one of the really nice things about this server manager. What I will tell you is I'm not going to worry about these services because these are just delayed services because we just rebooted the computer. It's not uncommon to see that happen. As a matter of fact, if I click refresh right up here, Sometimes that is all that we need. In other words, I might just refresh the screen and boom, the services have already started. Uh, in this case, they're still going. So 
Uh, let's not worry about that. Let's go back to our local server. Now, I will tell you that uh, while, while we wait for this to jump over to the local server, if this was a production machine, and if this was not right after rebooting, that might be an issue that those services aren't started yet. Now, I will also tell you, you'll notice that there's a bit of a delay here. We're just looking at a white screen. Uh, things are moving very slowly. And some of that could have to do with the level of resources that have been allocated to the virtual machine. And in the name of trying to get a number of virtual machines all together here so that I can demo a lot of this for you, I, I've put limited resources on these machines. But also, right after a reboot, you have certain services that are trying to start up and things like that. So it's not uncommon for this to be a little bit slow, especially when you're first configuring the server. So we're going to give this just a moment, and then we'll go ahead and continue. And so as you can see, everything has come up here. The computer name is now NYDC1, just like we changed it. We're still part of a work group. The Windows firewall is on. And again, typically, you want the firewall to be on. But because of what we're going to do here in this learning environment, I'm going to make a recommendation that I typically would not recommend. Okay, I want you to go ahead and click on the firewall if you're following along because I want you to turn it off. There are too many times that I've seen in a learning environment where you're trying to figure out how to work with a certain technology and you can't connect to a system or something's not working and the reason is because the Windows firewall is in the way. Now, I kind of go back and forth with this one. There is a side of me that says, well, you're going to have to learn how to work with it with the firewall on in the production world. But I would rather you learn the first time with the firewall not getting in the way. And then you can always go back and see, you know, once you've learned how to do something, go ahead and try it again with the firewall on and see what the differences are. See how you may have to set up certain exceptions to make things work. Okay, so we're going to turn it off. And, and by the way, you're welcome to go ahead and leave it on if you want. In other words, if you're of the philosophy that says, okay, you know what, I'll work through the learning headaches, go ahead. I'm just letting you know that if you, you know, run into a problem that maybe I don't have here, it could be your firewall that's causing the problem. So let's go ahead and close out of here. And notice that it still says that it's on. And the reason why is because when you make changes here in the server manager, it does not always change the screen instantaneously. If you give it a few moments, this will eventually change. Or if you want to see that, you know, you want to confirm that things have indeed changed, just go ahead and click to refresh the server. And it takes just a moment here, and you'll see the bar scrolling across, and boom, Windows Firewall is now off. Okay, so we've made that change. Uh, the next thing is remote management. It is enabled by default. Again, can't emphasize that enough. The intent is for you to not be at a physical computer. You're supposed to be managing it remotely, so they enable it by default. The next item we have here is remote desktop, which is disabled by default. The theory is with Windows Server 2012, when you are managing it remotely, it is supposed to be really, really, really close to managing it locally. And so the old days of having to remote desktop in to do everything, are kind of a thing of the past. Now that said, I am going to click on the link and I'm going to enable the remote desktop capabilities. And you'll see here that it's going to create a firewall exception. Okay, so that's how we would have got past the firewall for remote desktop. But I'll click OK to that message. And again, we've turned off the firewall, so it really doesn't matter. This checkbox right here, allow connections only from computers running remote desktop with NLA, network level authentication. That's an added layer of security. You have to be running Vista or newer as far as the operating system goes in order to support that. We could select specific users that can remote desktop in, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it with the default, which is that the administrator can get in. I don't need any other users to be able to get in. 